The ACL. So you're in New Orleans, but you're moving to the ACL. Yeah. So do you want to find a woman in Atlanta or are you still open to New Orleans? Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay. Gideon, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Gideon, how old are you? 42. Well, I'm sorry. I'll be 42 on the 29th of this month. Okay. Is that a leap? What's happening, man? Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's go, Gideon. Let's go. Bro, tell me, man. Tell me. Tell me that wasn't you on uh, the Kendra G show, man. Tell me that wasn't you. Somebody cloned Gideon. That wasn't you, bro. I'm not finna sit here and lie to you. Go ahead, my man. What? What? How did you end up on the Kendra G show? Well, I was talking on the phone with a friend. You know, me and my girl broke up. I don't want to say why. Just all I'm gonna say is it wasn't on me. But me and my girl broke up, and I was just talking to a friend. She said, "You know, she'll be she'll really be pissed if she see you on Kendra G." Cause I watched the show cause it's entertaining as hell. And my girl, my now ex girl put me up on the show. I said, Oh word. But like, yeah, you might want to check it out. I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I was like, no, nah, I ain't going to do it. She said, I dare you. I did. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to do it. So I went on the show. I ain't really even looking for nobody, but I just got on the show just to, for shits and giggles. All right, so what like it was like StreamYard. She had like a link yeah, or something like yard. that. So you That's was it. in the stream so you, so you was in the queue, you know, behind you know behind the scenes, and she tapped on you. You popped up, and did did you do the? Oh my God, I can't believe you! Picked I can't me. believe you picked me. Yeah. No, I didn't do that. But I, I just said, hey, can you hear me? And it was cool because I don't want to be like everybody else. Like you know how people say. What are your flaws? And they can't they can't tell you they flaws. Well, I got a problem with this. Um, that's it. Nah, fuck that. I'm gonna keep it real. Cause really I'm not trying to meet nobody. No, no, I'm not trying to jump into another relationship. I ain't ready for that. I ain't doing that shit for at least a year or two. But because you know, my lifestyle is rough. But but I do want to meet some new people to talk to. Okay. If it if it goes there in the future, it goes there. Okay, and I, I would imagine the Kendra G show would would probably be the show to you know meet somebody you know or or to connect. Bro, I got over eight hundred inboxes. Oh my god, are you serious? Yes. Wow. And most of the inboxes was like, I like to get to know you. You come off as really honest. You really are self-aware. I love your honesty, your transparency. You telling us what's wrong. I was like, I don't want to waste nobody's time. I'm going to tell you what's wrong with me because I don't want to waste your time. I don't want you to be six months in. You got feelings. I got feelings. And then you find out, oh, shit, this nigga got all these female friends. Nope. I told you at the beginning, remember? Oh, shit. This motherfucker pay bills and he blow his money. Nope. I told you that shit in the beginning, but I'm doing better with that shit I'm doing better with saving. I don't. I don't want to play. I don't want to play that bullshit. You know. Out of the 800 or so that that inbox you, man, which how how many of them is just looking looking to get with you simply because you're a truck driver? I've had five of those. I don't know how I'm gonna pay this light bill situation. I've had five of those. People think that's just a joke. But if y'all listening, that's some real shit with truck drivers. People really be with us. They'll chat us up for a bit, think we in the spot. They're like, I don't know how I'm going to pay this electric bill. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I've had like four white girls hit me up, and I clearly said no white girls. I, I don't. Yeah, that, but they feel like because I'm a black man with a few dollars, I'm supposed to automatically go for them. Fuck y'all. No offense, you know, nothing against white people in general. I'm just not into it romantically. I got white friends. I don't care about color when it comes to my friends, but I'm just not attracted to white people. That's all. So, bro, I I want to touch on uh, 
a statement that you made on the Kendra G show as far as uh as far as the statement that you made about you being in love with your ex friend at the time how did yeah, my, my now ex okay so you was with a lady but you you had feelings with her friend no no basically what it was was i met my best friend first we both worked at walmart back on back in the day like 2008 I didn't even know my wife existed at the time. Me and her messed around. It never went nowhere because she had a dude. And it's like, it was there. Like, everything was good, but she had a dude. And she like, she stopped messing with me because she started to feel guilty when she told me she had a dude. So, you know, that was dead, but we still maintained the friendship because it was solid. Yeah, I always had feelings for it, but then I met my wife, and them feelings got pushed aside, bro. My wife had everything I like, because I love me a big titty woman, bro. Um, and my wife was attractive. She had some big ass titties. Like, yeah, she was everything I wanted. Her personality was good. Like, it was all I wanted in a woman as well. So it's like my friend got pushed to the back of the line. I can't say I stopped loving it, because when you love somebody, you don't never really stop. But, um, she just kind of got pushed to the back, and I just let that ride. So when things then, when things started going sideways with with the wife, your feelings that's when, came back for 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 your best friend. Yeah, we we divorced, and you know I just started kicking it with my friend again. She was single at the time, so me and her got got together. I don't see nothing wrong with that. And it was respect. You know, oh, you yeah, gave yeah. the whole respect. We never did your... that while I was married. Right, I'm not right. doing that. Right. You gave the whole respect to your wife. Your your wife, did your wife knew about the best friend? She knew back in the, she knew that I used to mess with her. And she knew it was just a friendship thing. Now, like, because you know how you, you got vibes. If there's sexual tension between somebody, you can feel that shit. But um, she she didn't detect none of them vibes because it wasn't there. Like, yes, I still loved her, but I wasn't like, oh, my God, I got to have her. It wasn't like that at that point. We we just realized we made good friends. And she helped me and my wife stay together for so long because I almost left my wife a long time ago for something. I'm not going to say what because I don't want no footage on the Internet of me talking bad about the mother of my children because videos are forever. And I don't want my sons to find that. So I can't say why. I can't say why out of respect. But, yeah. All right. So there was a comment uh, that I came across. And in that comment, it says that, you know, truck drivers are taking more L's than a little bit on the Kendra G show. I mean, I I seen, you know, seen a few uh, truck drivers that I know. But what do you think mm -hmm. about that? What do you think about that comment? Do you honestly think that truck drivers are making themselves look bad on that show? I don't think so, because let's keep it a buck. It's not like we are in the same social circles in the same places all the time. We skip around. We get around. So not like sexually, but I mean, like we get around because I don't know where I'm going to be in three days. You feel me? I don't know where I'm going to be in three days. I could be in New York. I could be in Pennsylvania. I could be in Georgia. I don't know. So because of that, because of me not knowing where I'm going to be, it's hard for me to meet people and establish, you know, real relationships. Do you think the people that actually come on there, and I'm talking about the females, do you think the females uh, are delusional that comes on there when they be expecting you know, uh, certain types of men that they're looking for? Or do you think they just come in on there just to, just to, uh, just to be a part of the atmosphere, to be a part of the, uh, uh, to be a part of the Kendra G show. And they, they just really, really come in on there just to show out and, and get their social media lights and follows up. 
I think it's a little bit of all of the above, depending on the person. Some of these women definitely are there and are delusional. Like, like I've been saying, I started to say this, like, please don't have no more than two baby daddies. If you got three, four, five baby daddies, I'm sorry, you got bad coochie control, BCC. But, um, yeah, I, I was about to say that, but I, but I thought better of it at the end. But a lot of them are delusional because here I am making some pretty decent money, right? Why would I want to get with you and you got four baby daddies? Why would I want that in my life? That's eight extra personalities that come with you. Because you got the four kids and you got the four daddies. Why would I want to be with somebody like that? Exactly. Why? I, You know, I, I, I see these women all the time. And like I said, I, I just see the show as as a, an extension of uh, entertainment. Ke- yeah, entertainment and also an extension of Kevin Samuels because unfortunately, you know, Kevin Samuels passed. May he rest in peace. Uh, but when he passed, her show definitely picked up in popularity. You know, it's not, it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like the female version of of Kevin Samuels when Kendra sometimes go in on some of these women. She do. She do. And the crazy thing is that, oh, so you a picnic. She was like, no, y'all call my show. Y'all want to meet a man. And I'm telling you what these men want. So do you want to meet a man or not? You I don't care what men think. Do you want to meet a man or not? <laughs> That's That goes back to what I said, that they just coming on to the show just to you know, just to, just to get their information out there or to get their social media cloud up, you know, their, their Instagram. It definitely their, will do that. Yeah, you know, their Instagram and their YouTube and uh, TikTok or whatever the case. During the, during the course of the show, man, how, how do you feel that it went? I thought it was pretty cool, you know. They lit me up in the comments, but, like, does it really matter? Hmm. You got a point there. <laughs> I got a woman. I got a woman on there now. She's invited me to come spend the weekend with her. I'm not doing that. It's too soon for that. But you know, she's ready. She's down. She just sent me some pictures. Nice looking women too. God damn it, man. Cause like I said on the show, I don't like them too big. I don't like them too small. I like them right there in the middle. Well, I always said that you know beauty is always in the eye of be uh, in the eye of the beholder. So you know, for the women, the yeah. delusional women that do come on there talking all that, talking all that rah rah stuff. I got fifty million baby daddies. I got five kids. I'm you know uh, I, I'm for the streets. There's there's somebody that's going to get with her. You know, I I don't yeah. think they're going to necessarily get together for you know for a relationship but they definitely going to oh, no. get the they definitely going to get together for a, good for time, a clap. Not a long time right they're going to get together for a clap session you know right i tell i tell women i explain this to women all the time cuz women love to say well men like these strippers they be all over and men like these bbls and men like this no 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 here's the thing about a man every man has two sets of standards there's that standard of who he wants to marry and be with. And then there's the standard of who he just wants to smash. That smash standard is lower than who he wants to be with. But that's just the bottom line. You can have some big old titties or a big old ass, and he don't want to smash. But if that's all you got to offer, he ain't going to want to be with you. Like, I wish more women understood that simple concept. So that was actually you, Gideon. That that wasn't the clone up there. Yep, that was all me. Have you? And ha- I stand by everything I said on this. Have you seen any other truck drivers uh, on on the show? I have before a couple of them. I don't know them, but I've seen them. All right, all right. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Are you still? All right. So, are you still driving? <laughs> Yeah, oh, driving, like, in the career, yes, I'm between jobs. I literally got fired. I was on there Wednesday, 
and got fired Thursday morning. I found another job and went for the drug test Friday and I'm starting. I'm, you know, they, the drug test results came in this morning. So they got me a rental car up to Illinois. So I'm going to take a quick job with one of these black ops companies for about three months to get my paper back up. What happened if, if you care to explain what, what happened to the last job, bro? Uh, if you care to explain. Well, that's cool. I don't have a problem explaining it. Basically, I was with a company called Just In Time Transportation. I'm about to put a video up on my TikTok explaining my issues with them. But um, basically, what happened with them was they fired me because of a drop trailer. But here's the thing. It didn't drop all the way. I was getting the... I was getting the, um, what you call it? Um, sorry, I'm trying to figure out some stuff with this rental car. But I was getting my trailer out of, um, I mean, getting my truck, pulling out to go drop off a load that morning. I had like a 10 mile drive. But when I got there, the trailer must have been unhooked or something. Because when I hooked up, it was two tugs. But then that next morning, I'm trying to pull out. And I pulled out. Trailer comes with me. Took a turn. Trailer was still there. Took another turn in front of the fuel pumps. And then the trailer, I felt it rock the frame of the truck. So I said, oh, fuck. So I stopped. It was on the frame. So I just used the legs to lift it on up. And once I lifted it up, got it back in, somebody called me and said, hey, did you drop a trailer? I said, yeah, how y'all know? He said, yeah, we got a call that said you dropped the trailer. And I said, yeah, and I told them what happened. It's like, oh, okay, well, that's fine. And that was it. Nothing else. Then they called me in after I delivered my load, my last load to Fort Worth. Then they told me to come to the yard, which was like 220 miles away, deadhead. So I come to the yard. And then the next day they fired me and said there was, I didn't report an accident. Like, are you serious? You call that an accident? I didn't hit nobody. Nobody hit me. So I was like, well, well, equipment failure is considered an accident and you didn't report it. So yeah, they fired me. I said, okay. And just went and got another job. I'm, That's I'm the sorry. That's the CDL. I'm sorry. Oh, well, conf- I got a better job. Don't be sorry. I got I'm, a better job. No, no. I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm confused. You mm-hmm. so you drop a trailer. I mean, you know that it happens. You know, mm-hmm. it happens. You know, sometimes you know we get up under there. We do a couple of tub tests, and you know sometimes the you know the kingpin comes loose, and you you move mm-hmm. out and you drop you know you drop the trailer. If it was empty, you just put it in low gear and crank it back up and get back up under there and make sure it's locked into place. You know, you, you didn't drop the truck. You, the, the trailer didn't come dislodged while you was on the, on no, the road. No, it was just on the frame of the truck. Okay. So that's an accident? Dropping the trailer? That's what he considered it. Yep. I thought it was some bullshit too, but they considered it an accident. So they let me go. It was bad enough because the company wasn't really paying much. Like, I'm going to say one thing. Just in time transportation in Ashdown, Arkansas, they, the recruiters tell you you will make 61 cents per mile. When you get there, and after you've gotten there and quit your old job, your orientation, then they tell you it's 50 cents a mile. It's sixty cent a mile with with uh, incentives, right? Yeah, you got to get your fuel bonus. You got to get your safety bonus. You got to have a perfect, you know, logbook. Then you can get that, but it's not given. Then it's given per mile. Like, not a fan of that. And I, you know, a lot of these uh, recruiters that be putting on social media. You know, they 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 really concentrate on the money 
aspect of it. Hey, you can make a thousand or you can make two thousand dollars. You can make three thousand dollars. But when you get there, you 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 then find out that you're not making three thousand dollars every week. You're not making yeah. 60 cent a mile every week. You're not making twenty five hundred to three thousand miles every week. There's going to be some weeks that you're not going that you're not going to see uh, two thousand dollars. There's going to be some weeks that you see. $1,500. There's going to be a week that you probably might see $1,000. So my problem... Yeah, my, that's why when people recruit me, I always say, show me six consecutive paychecks. And they're not. The only place that ever recruited me by doing that was somebody at VL Trucking. They showed me six consecutive paychecks, and they were all over $2,000. And that was the company side. Before you give your time, before you give your energy, before you your presence to a company, you you definitely you got to you you got to research that company, man. Because a lot of these companies out here is just scammers, man. And for the people that just want to come in and say, "Oh, I just want to give that company a try," go ahead, go ahead. I mean, just know what you're getting into. That's all. Don't just get in there and then all of a sudden something happens and then you're going to make another video about uh, about how bad the company is. You already knew that the company was bad. You know? So, Gideon, man, thanks very much, bro, man, for your time. I know you're busy. I know you're trying to get over to this new company to keep your bag running and everything, man. I do appreciate you stepping in the building and chopping it up with me, man. You stay safe out there, and uh, and hopefully uh, this new company that you're driving for will get you to where you need to be. Yeah, I've already heard a bunch of good stuff about it, so I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm going to be straight. But all right, man, take it easy. All right, bro, I'll talk to you later, man. Big G's got it locked.